Pastor Bill Evans, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church, uh, part of the Chet TV uh, pastoral ministerial activity going on in the community. We're thankful to Chetwin, Fellow uh, Chetwin Fellowship, thankful to Chet TV for their use of our, our um, gifts and blessings that we have to be hopefully be through our churches and our community and to do this time. So we welcome you to uh, uh, sit in on our little thoughts that we're going to share this, this time here. Um, I've chosen to do a thing for kids today and uh, children, and I used this message some while back in my own church, uh, and it's called uh, The Bible and Little Folk is what I've entitled it. And uh, I just want that God's given us the Bible, and in the Bible, he sh it's like a valentine. It's, it's his heart of love for us. And, um, but he, he loves kids, too, and kids are so important in the heart of God, of mind, in the mind of God. And, and so he writes some important things and wants us to take note of little things that are important uh, in the scriptures. In the book of Proverbs, verse 24, uh, thir chapter 30, verse 24, we have this statement. Four things are small on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are not a strong people, but they prepare their food in summer. And then he says, the little, they're like guinea pigs, little conies, like a little guinea pig, live up in the rocks and the mountains. I've seen them lots of times and whatever. They're not mighty people, yet they make their houses in the rocks, and among the rocks is where they live. And then it says, the locusts uh, have no king, yet all of them go out in their ranks. They march in file, and they kind of come across, and they clean off, and they can clean up a whole crop or whatever. And then my version talks about lizards, but other things say, say the idea is more like these spiders. And maybe even lizards, little tiny lizards, can it get, they live in the king's palace. And where do spiders not live in the world? They live everywhere. Four little things, God says, are very small, but they're exceeding wise. They get into king's palaces. They live and they, do, they play a part in the uh, ecosystem. Locusts have got a part where they march and they walk and they show us, uh, um, they show us uh, how to be uh, disciplined. And uh, the ants work hard in the summer to store for the winter. All those wonderful things, God says, little things wants us to take note of. And so I want to show you some things about what God's word uh, is for little folk. Um, my Bible says in Psalm 119, he says this, he says, God's word is like a hammer. Uh, no, God's word is like a, a, a flashlight. Um, it'll come to the hammer bit in a bit. But uh, it says God's word is like a, 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 a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Um, and uh, I thought I had this marked here. And so as he, as he says this, we live in a world that's dark. Uh, it doesn't have to be because of, there's overcast skies, and last night I couldn't see the moon because it was overcast. But um, uh, he, he says, my word is like a lamp uh, to my feet and a light to my path. And that God wants us to walk through the world and be able to see where we're going because tripping and falling is not fun. And so he, uh, he says, my word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Uh, I brought a flashlight. Uh, a little one. You have your own at home. You got them on your phones nowadays. There's a pretty bright one. And uh, I found this one for 25 cents at Red Apple the other day. That's a pretty good little light, eh? And God says, I want you little folks to know and people to know. My word is like a lamp to your feet. When the world is dark and dreary and scary, COVID and all those things, he says, my word is like a lamp for you. And so just be mindful of that. And then uh, the second thing he says is an interesting one. He says, my, my word in the book of Jeremiah, he says, my word is like a hammer. It's like a hammer? That's interesting. God, why would God's word be like a hammer? Well, you know how a hammer works. It breaks things. And if you're ever going to take a hammer and break a stone, you make sure you're wearing goggles and you should be wearing some clothes that you're not going to get a piece of uh, shrapnel from the rock and hit you and cut yourself. Because I did that as a little boy. Hitting a rock with a hammer, it can be serious. But he says, hammers, they break rocks. And God's word is like a hammer. How is that? Well, you know, when somebody's mean and hard to you, harsh to you, and cruel to you, like a bully to you, if you wish, when they're mean, the Bible says, or a soft answer turns away anger. If somebody's mad, you always just make me so mad, I want to hit you. And you say, well, I'm sorry that I do that, whatever. But I'll, I'll try to be nice, whatever. And a soft answer, he says, turns away wrath. And that person goes home, why was that person so nice when I was so bad? And God says, my word is like a hammer and starts tapping on that bad heart, that heart that's like that. And, uh, and, and he wants to uh, soften that heart by your story there. So you um, just be mindful that God's word is like a hammer and a soft answer turns away wrath rather than something that's harsh and whatever. Uh, so be mindful of that. 
And the other one that he tells us is, is interesting. He, uh, he says God's word is like a, a mirror. Pastor Bill um, finds that um, mirrors can be scary. Um, I carry this one with me all the time. Not to look in. I just leave it on my dash in case I need a light and uh, whatever. God's word is like a mirror. Well, how does it get to be like a mirror? Put it towards you, whatever, and uh, whatever. Um, God's word is like a mirror. And the way he's like a mirror is that, here's some verses, and I'll read them for you. If I can find my glasses, here we are. And uh, in the book of James, way over in the New Testament, he makes this statement. He says that, um, um, here we got it in verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, the word of God, and not a doer, He's like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and he sees dirt and whatever and then he goes outside. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. Oh, you've got dirt all over your face. And, uh, you know, your friends might say, well, you've got dirt all over your face. Or if they're not very friendly, like and they don't like you, they say, that crazy guy, they don't tell him he's got dirt on his face. They just go and tell stories. He's not even smart enough to wash his face. Well, if you looked in the mirror, saw the dirt and didn't do anything about it, you're strange. It's kind of weird, eh? God says when you look in the Word of God and it tells us what we're like, that we, we all need forgiveness for our sins and those things, when it tells us what we're like, we can say, I'm not going to listen to that. God put my finger in the mirror. That's silliness. I'm not going to believe that Bible stuff. And he says, my Word's like a mirror. If you look at it and do what it tells you, it'll show you what you're like and what you need to have help with. So God goes on from there after he says his word is like a flashlight, like the path for getting through life from this dark world into heaven. God's word is like a hammer, breaks hard rocks and, and with a soft answer and whatever. And then a mirror that shows us what we're like. There's one other expression in John chapter 8, verse 12. And um, this is what I find there that's quite interesting. Uh, Jesus makes this statement and um, he says he's the light of the world. Uh, John 8, verse 12. And um, I lost my mark here. Here it comes. Okay, he says, Jesus again says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You'll have a light like shining inside you. If you follow Jesus, he says, I'm the light of the world. You follow me. You won't be walking in darkness. Why? Because he said, my word will be with us and whatever. But he goes from that story there over to... Um, um, is that 617 there? A few months, good. Okay, good. So he goes from that idea of saying, I'm the light of the world, and if we have Jesus living with us, and, 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 and we're going to see that he lives in us, then that will help us with um, uh, how to get through life. The next part that I want to show you then is a very special thing, because Jesus makes this statement, and this is how it reads. John 14, 14 If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and will come to him, and make our abode with him. What is that? Jesus says, if you love me, if you say you love me, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me. If anyone says he loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come and make our living, make a, take up living inside of him. How does God do that? Well, he says, by his spirit, with his spirit, the spirit of Jesus, and the love of Jesus, he comes and lives in our hearts. And so he says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and he will come and make his living within that person. So if we say we love Jesus, he wants to come and live within us. I got an illustration to show you if I could. And I saw this cup in the store one day and it's kind of what a silly cup somebody would sell, a spooky old story of that cup, whatever. It was at the thrift store over here and I didn't buy it. I thought, what a silly cup that is. And so I didn't buy it. But a friend of mine one time was away, and when they came home, they brought me a cup, this one. And I was reading what it says on the box. And it's ugly, scary world of this cup here, whatever. But the directions, the directions told me to do this. And when I did that, is there anything happening on my cup? There's rabbits, there's animals, deer, and all those things coming out in this cup. Now, how did that happen? Well, it's called a morph cup. That's quite interesting. But I thought that's a perfect example of what happens when Jesus comes to live in our lives. He says, if you love me and you keep my word, my Father and I will come and we will live inside you. 
and we'll help you to be kind and loving like Jesus and caring, and your life will be bright and have fruit and on the apple trees and, and friends like bunnies and, and all those nice things. If we trust Jesus and walk with him, he will come and live in our lives. And so we have that opportunity to do that, and his, his Bible, the Bible shows us those kind of things that are important to him. We come and tell God we love him, and we say, Jesus, I'd like you to come and live inside my life. And as we ask him to do that, he comes in, he promises, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall find help from God. He'll be saved them and he'll take care of them. And he'll change our life from dark and scary to beautiful and bright and lovely and caring. And so we can help um, uh, those around us to know uh, God's love and care and, and protection. And those people that are hard, hard to get along with and whatever, um, then, then those persons can be changed as we love them and care for them and show them love back. Because many times those bullies are people that are hurting and they have no love. They don't know anybody loves them. They think they're mean. They think they justify their, their meanness. When Jesus comes and lives inside us, guess what? We get to be this very nice and useful and very bright and happy uh, instrument of good in his hand. And he blesses us with that. So I want us to take those thoughts if we could together. God's word is like a flashlight for our lives. For small people and small things in the world, God takes note. My word's like a flashlight. My word's like a hammer. It breaks a hard heart. My word's like a mirror. Shows us what we're like and then expects us to respond properly. And then as, as the light of the world, Jesus says, I am. If you walk with me, you won't walk in darkness. If you ask me and follow my word, my Father and I will come and live in your heart. And you'll be nice and bright and useful and your heart will be blessed as you follow God. Can you see the bunny on that side there? Uh, that's hot water going in there, put it in there, and uh, it works well. Thank you, and God bless you. May your heart be encouraged in these things. Amen.